This is James Holder for the Cassis and Holder Show here on Box Nation. I'm in bar number six today in Swansea. Yep, Swansea. Joined by the legendary Anzo Macronelli. How are you, sir? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Bit, uh, bit disappointed, a bit devastated, but uh, physically I'm okay. I started off well. Uh, he was a nice, fast jab, which he struggled to compete with. Um, and if anything, I, I sort of touch touching him with the jab too early than what we expected. We thought it'd take a couple of rounds to get used to him because he's, he's a you know clever boxer. You know, I felt comfortable uh, and got a bit too greedy and went for a went for a, a silly shot. Uh, right up a cut, wide right up a cut. Got counter with a left hook. Um, I think it was around the side of the year, stumbled and he came in and finished me off and um, unfortunately unfortunately asked boxing. It is such a lonely sport at times, boxing. It's only you versus another man. No amount of planning, no amount of, amount of perfect camp can prepare for that one punch. But having said that, how, how do you think you dealt with that? Uh, it, well, it was just, you know, we, we had three weeks' notice for the fight. We had, um, but I had no hesitation in taking a fight. I was nice and fit, I'm nice and strong. I'm training every morning. Um, then three, then three weeks we had, I smashed the training and I had quality sparring. Um, didn't do a great deal of sparring, but it was good enough, uh, more than enough, and f fit and sharp. And you know, I showed down the first two minutes how good I looked. And um, you know, I really thought it'd take us about two or three rounds to get close to him. Um, didn't. It got close to him straight away. Uh, got a bit too eager. Got a bit too keen. Wanted to put a show on, uh, like I always do, uh, and got tagged, mate. And. Um, as you say, we're boxing in the loneliest place in the world. It is. It's, uh, for me, it's the best sport in the world. This man on man, best man wins. We saw some sort of social media stuff immediately after from yourself suggesting that that could be the end of the road. Having had time to sort of think about that, what, what is your decision going forward, Enzo? Uh, basically, the same as on a night. You know, I apologise to everyone that um, you know, I didn't come out on Trumps. I know not a lot of people care. Um, as long as my, I'm, I'm healthy and I'm safe. But you know, I, I felt the need to apologise. It was, it was sort of my mistake of being too keen and too eager. I got caught. And you know, I basically just said that you know, I'd hate the end my career like that. I'm gutted I have to end my career like that. And um, you know, my, my wife 100% wants me to jack it in. She wanted it after a long time. But then my son, who's my biggest fan, um, he wants me to have one more uh, to make 50, but he wants me to fight Kuchar again. Um, so, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And, um, you know, my boy said to me, so he said, Dad, why do you throw that stupid uppercut? You know, he's, uh, he counted it. He should never have thrown a shot like that. And you know, even, even my eight-year-old boy can see uh, that I've done wrong. At 35 years of age, you've been involved in boxing for near on 20 years, uh, every sort of level. How much do you feel you, you've got to give and want, want to give back to the sport at this stage? And so, because I think no one would sort of begrudge you running off into the sun to enjoy, enjoy the rest of your life, mate. Yeah, I, I love the sport. And, um, you know, my, my dad passed away four years ago. I've taken over his amateur gym. Um, you know, i got a good team up there. I think there were 20 to 30 boys up there, uh, all fighting. Um, you know, it, it's, it's great to be involved. I'm doing it, I've been doing it, for, well, I was helping my dad before then, so I've been helping my dad since I was 20. Um, but, you know, it's great fulfillment and seeing the boys come on and, you know, teaching them well and, you know, to, to, see, to see the effort they put in. You know, I just love boxing. Um, you know, I like to be involved with punditry when I retire, you know, something like that. I, I like to think that I know what I'm talking about the, most of the time anyway. Um, you know, but as for fighting, I don't know, I, I think... If, if I'd have walked out there and Kucha would have schooled me and boxed my head off and you know beat me up, yes, he caught me some the terrific shots, but you know if he'd have beat me up and you know locked out to my depth, uh, you know by all means I, I'd be happy. But I do do feel that the only reason I lost that fight is because I made a silly mistake and a silly mistake where. Kucha was good enough, more than good enough to capitalise on it, and he you know, caught me with a shot. And um, you know, but we'll have to see. I'll have to, I'll have to speak to Frank. I'll have to speak to Gary. But ultimately, it's, um, it's me. It's going to make a decision. I, I couldn't uh, bear the thought of walking away because someone else have told me to. You carry ferocious punching power. You, you only got to look at your percentage of KO ratio that you still retain in the pros to know that. But sometimes your defensive frailties make you a really exciting fighter at the same point because you never know what sort of going to happen in the fights you're in. At the age you are now, do you think you can, can correct those things or is it a case of you can't change your leopard spots at this age? Well, I have changed them. You know, since I've been with Gary, he have changed them. And, uh, you know, the instructions on last Friday were... Uh, for three rounds, keep nice and tight, pop a jab in his face, you know, slowly back him up and then, you know, take, 
go to work on him. Um, you know, that's what that's what we worked on. That's what we've, that's what Gary uh, come up with the idea, which was a, a terrific plan. Um, and I just sort of I apologised to Gary the next day. He didn't need no apology, but I apologised to Gary the next day because. I'd done the one thing he told me not to do, and the, I think the main thing he said was no uppercuts in the first couple of rounds, no wild uppercuts, um, and I'd done that. So you know, it, it had been sorted a little bit, but uh, my power is what gets me in trouble because I, I think the way I like to fight, I've been brought up, I've been brought up watching like the Gattis, the Chavez, the Barreras, all entertaining fighters, and for me to hear that crowd booing because there's a lull in the action, to me that's more devastating than anything else. Um, so that that sort of tells me what I'm about. You know, I, I I try to entertain. I like the fans to enjoy what I do. If you could go back and relive one fight or one night in your career again as a pinnacle moment, what night would it be, Enzo? What night as much as much graced your imagination and presence as any other? Uh, I, I like the Dominguez fight. It was um, you know I was 25 years of age. Uh, 26, sorry. Um, I was fighting a, a rugged beast from Argentina. Um, he was he was built like a ball. He was a former three-time world champion. Um, never been stopped. Never been down. Fought some great fighters: Johnny Nelson, uh, Juan Carlos Gomez. Uh, he gave away. I think a fight before me. He gave away about nine stone to Nikolai Valuev. Uh, lost a split decision. Uh, you know, uh, and I've gone out and knocked him out in the ninth round. Um, you know, put him over the tremendous uppercut. Um, so that would probably be the one. He was, he was the first man who taught me that not everyone can go down easy. Uh, I caught him in the third round um, with the right hand, best right hand I've ever thrown. Threw him a jab, made him fall short with a jab, caught him coming in with the right hand. He just looked at me and said, good shot. So from that, from that moment in time, that showed me uh, how tough some of these men are. I mean, you haven't always had it your own way. You suffered defeat, I think it was in your fourth professional contest starting out. So at that point, you probably asked yourself questions. Is this for me? Is this the job I, I, on the career I want to I want to take part in? Um, it, it sort of was, but it weren't. It's, um, and it was a picture of me somewhere the night before. Night before that fight, I was in town uh, drinking and uh, having a smoke because I, I thought I could get away with it. You know, I hit so hard. I was, only had nine senior fights. Won them all uh, by knockout in the first round in the amateurs with head guards on. Um, and I, I just thought I was too good. Uh, for anyone, and uh, I was out the night before, and I was drinking and messing around, and you know I had my come up ones, and from that moment, um, from that moment in time, I realised what I needed to do to become a champion. If there was one fight in your career you could go back and sort of change the result or change something you done to impact that result, other than the Kutcher fight, what what fight would it be, Enzo? It's a, it's a couple of them, mate, because there's um, there's a few problems leading up to some of the fights. But I'm not I'm not going to be sour grapes. I'm not going to make excuses because the fact of the matter was, I turned up. No one made me fight. Uh, I've gone in there knowing knowing I weren't well. I was knowing near seventy percent for some of them, but I went there uh, and no one that made me fight. Um, but if it was one I had to change, it would be the Lebedev one because. Um, I just didn't turn up that night. I had a new trainer in Carl Ince, who was absolutely brilliant. You know, he, he tried to get me, uh, uh, sort of correct me, correct my defence and slow me down and calm me down. But that's just not my way. And you know, the the night, the night of that fight against Lebedev, I just did not want to be in the ring. You've been in with some great fighters. Obviously, you mentioned Dominguez, Lebedev, David Hay, uh, Gunn. The list of fighters and top fighters that you've been in with is fantastic. As I said, do you still feel the hunger and to still feel the need to, to want to carry on, Enzo? Uh, yeah, I still feel the hunger because of how, how well I was looking in the gym. And, um, you know, I, I, don't think I, I don't think I sort of, how they say, grow old overnight last Friday. I think I just I got over, overzealous, over keen mm -hmm. and, got, and got tagged with a shot. And, um, you know, it's, uh, at that weight, anyone tags, you, anyone tags you correct, there's only one place you go in. And, um, you know, like my own fault, but you know, I've been I've been in the gym this morning, I went in the gym yesterday, and uh, maybe, maybe it's just a, just to get some bad bad things out of my head. But you know, I, I feel strong, I feel fit, and you know, I didn't take no damage, really damage. You know, I took a couple of shot, a couple of heavy shots, but you know, I drove home from London the same night on my own. I, I was fine. Like. So I was going to say, I know I spoke to you briefly, and I know you went and watched your boy play football the next morning after the defeat to Kutcher, which. 
to travel like 300 miles by a car and then watch your son at 11 in the morning. It's an exceptional thing to do on its own. No, we, you know, we, we knew we had his, uh, we knew we had his tournament. Um, family comes first for me, but you know, the idea was to stay up there, leave early in the morning. He had to be there by nine, so I was going to just sleep there, uh, wake up at half, half past four or five o'clock, drive home, take him there. As it happens, is you know, I just did not want to be that that, that there, so I, um, uh, I just decided to drive home, go home by half past four. Um, just late on, late, late on, on a Saturday, had a couple of hours kept on a Saturday. My boy woke me up, um, criticised me for that stupid uppercut, like I said, uh, and then I had to take him up to a football tournament, which lasted till about six o'clock in the evening. So I, you know, I didn't, uh, didn't actually want to be there that day, but family comes first. We've seen, interestingly enough, Liam Williams will face Gary Corcoran in Cardiff, I do believe. Massive fight. There's obviously talk of Craig Kennedy fighting on that against Overall McKenzie. Would that interest you to get on that card, potentially as a signing off fight, if you like, for your 50th, it'll be your 50th contest. Does that, is that something you've already thought about, Enzo? Um, no, I think it'd be too soon, but um, you know, I think um, the Kennedy versus Oval fight, I think that's gonna be, uh, gonna happen in October. Um, you know, if we can get that fight on in Wales, Possibly, you know, see if Frank can work his magic and try and get me cultured again. You know, that that would be unbelievable for me. Um, obviously, Liam Williams, maybe Ahmed Patterson. You know, what what a fantastic card. You know, the Motor Point Arena in Cardiff would be absolutely bouncing. You know, that'd be my 50th fight, and you know, I could walk away happy. But it's all, all ifs and buts at the moment. If you have that 50th fight and you win, can you see yourself? calling it a day because I know you're a boxing man through and through Enzo and sometimes you need to protect a man from himself it's an old saying do you think if you were to win that you would want to call it a day at the 50th yeah I'd walk away I'd walk away I don't know I made a promise um, and I'd be happy then it's, um, don't get me wrong I, I feel I feel good I feel fit but yeah it, w it will be a time when uh, that would probably be it as I said you've had an illustrious career there's not much you haven't accomplished and you've done things your own way to leave the sport with all your faculties intact and to have a, go on to have a career, whether that be punditry or coaching, it, it could be the, maybe the be best thing for you as a person to find that next level. But until you find that peace in your own mind and that sort of wanting to, to do the next step, it, it's, it's entirely, it's a hard thing and hard decision to make, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, like, like I said, you know, I've done this for 20 years I've been boxing now. I had my first fight when I was 10 years of age. Um, so I've been 20 boxing for 20 years, um, 25 years. Sorry, you know I've been boxing for 25, 26 years, and you know it's. But I've got other things to do. My my kids are growing up. I enjoy a lot while I'm coaching the youngsters up at gym. Um, but like you said, it's it's a matter of myself to be fulfilled. Uh, and yes, you know people say you've got a fantastic career, and I look back: British, Commonwealth, European, uh, world titles. Commonwealth, I won at a lower weight, so I won two weight, two titles at different weights. Um, so, you know, I have had a career, and I'm proud of what I've done. And um, you know, I like to think I've entertained people along the way as well. Uh, but it's it's a matter of being fulfilled at the moment. And um, you know, I might I might in a couple of days might decide nah, I've had enough. But at this moment in time. Uh, I, you know, I still got a strong desire and a strong will. If you could go back in time and give 20-year-old Enzo one piece of advice that would stand him in good stead for the future, what what would that advice be? Listen to certain people. Don't try and do things yourself. That, that's basically it. You know, I've sometimes just been uh, too pig-headed and um, been stubborn, and you know, just realise that you know my my power is a, a great asset, um, but. You know, sometimes I just want to listen to people. So yeah, I would, uh, I would definitely say just listen to certain people who know better than you. Sometimes, as a fighting man, it's hard to do that. That's what makes you the fighter that you are. The fact that you are stubborn, the fact that you do things your own way. So it, it's a, it's a double-edged sword a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. And um, prime example is that you know I text Gary and said, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry. Uh, to, 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 that I threw that up a cut and I didn't listen didn't listen to what he said uh, you know he texted me back straight away he said what are you sorry for you don't need to be sorry he said that's your instinct as a fighter sure. you know you've seen something you threw it but um, you know just he, he put a lot of hard work into me and I just felt felt a bit gutted that I let him down by not listening and doing my own thing I can honestly say you haven't let anyone down you've been a fantastic ambassador for the sport a real gentleman and a real family man and someone that the younger boxers can really look up to Enzo so what 
whatever you decide to do, you know you've got the full support of Box Nation. I'm sure your promoter and your, your team as well, you know. Thank you very much, mate. It means a lot. Hopefully we see you uh, enjoying a bit of life at the moment and putting on a bit of calories end up, you know what I mean? Yeah, I love, I love food, uh, I had a few pizzas since, but uh, I still look after my diet. I bet you do. <laughs> I wish I could say the same, you know what I mean? Yeah, Matt is, you know, is, like I said, life, life is about living and at the moment um, I've lived my life, I've lived it the way I wanted to live it and you know, maybe, maybe the chapter's not finished yet, may, maybe, it, maybe it is, so we'll see. Listen, you're only as young as you feel and you, I know you're fresh for 35, mate, so whatever you decide, best of luck with it and thank you for talking to Cassie and Show, I really do appreciate it. James, you're a diamond, thanks for coming down, mate. Top man, thank you, Enzo. Cheers, buddy.